In this video, we're going to learn the basics of using lists in Python. So lists are built in type in Python. Lists allow us to store an ordered collection of data. So for example, we could create a list with a is equal to, and then open square bracket, two, negative four, six, separated by commas, and then close square bracket. This will give us a list with the items two, negative four, and six, where the items are the collection of data that the list stores. Open square bracket and close square bracket allow us to create the list. We could output the list with print A. And if we save the program and run it, we'll get here the list two, negative four, and six. Now the items in the list have an order where each item is available at an index. So for example, two here is available at the index zero. Negative four here is available at the index one and six is available at the index two. We can access individual list items by using their index. So down here, we could have A at the index zero, and this is going to access the first item in the list. We could output it with print like this. And if we save the program and run it, we'll get here two. We could access the third item in the list with print A, at the index two. And if we save this and run it, we'll get here six. We can also use this syntax to modify items in the list. So for example, we could have here a at the index one is equal to 100. That's going to modify this item here. A at the index one is now going to be equal to 100. We'll output that here with print a. We'll save the program and run it, and now we get two, 106. The length of a list is not fixed. We can add and remove items. So for example, we can use append to add an item to the end of a list. Here, we could have a dot append seven. And append is a method of the list type. It's going to append the new item seven to the end of this list. We could then output a with print a, and if we save the program and run it, we'll now get two, 100, six, and seven. We can also use the insert method to insert a new item at a specific index. So for example, a dot insert one three is going to insert the item three at the index one. So three is going to be inserted here and then 100, six, and seven will be shifted down by one index. We'll output A here and then save our program and run it. And we get here two, three, 106, and seven. We can also append another list using the extend method. So if we have here A dot extend and we pass it the list eight, four, this is going to append this list to A. We'll output the list again and then if we save the program and run it, we see the list now has eight and four appended onto the end. We can also delete items from the list. So DEL and then A at the index one will delete the item at the index one from the list, in this case, three. We'll output A again with print A and then save the program and run it and we see that three has been deleted. We can use the remove method to remove the first occurrence of a value in the list. So for example, we could remove the first occurrence of the value eight. Here we'll have a dot remove eight, and then we'll print a. And if we save the program and run it, then we see that eight has been removed. The pop method when called with no arguments will remove and return the last item in the list. So for example, we could have here last is equal to a dot pop. And pop is going to remove and return the last item in the list, in this case, four. We'll output here a, we'll also output last. We'll save the program 
and run it. And we can see pop remove four from the list and returned it as well. We can supply pop with an index and the item at that index will be removed. So for example, we could have a dot pop with the argument two, and that would remove the third item from the list. We'll try that. We'll have here third is equal to a dot pop two. Then we'll output here a and third. And if we save the program and run it, then we'll see that six has been removed. We can get the length of a list. In other words, the number of items in the list using the len function. So we could have here print and then length colon, and then we'll have len and we'll pass it a. And if we save this and run it, we'll get a length of three, which is correct. We can use the in operator to check if a value is in a list. So here we could have if 100 is in a, then we'll output here 100 is in list, else we'll output here 100 is not in list. And if we save the program and run it, we'll get here 100 is in the list. We could have something like 8 in A, and 8 is not in A. Then we would get 8 is not in list. So we'll save this and try it. And we do get that 8 is not in the list. We can use the reverse method to reverse the list. So we could have here a dot reverse. And then if we print a and try it, then we can see the list has been reversed because before we had two 107 and now we have seven 102. We can use the sort method to sort the list in ascending order. We could have here a dot sort. And then if we print a and try it out, we'll get here two, seven, and 100. And so the items have been sorted in ascending order from smallest to largest. If we pass the sort method, reverse is equal to true, then we'll get back the list in descending order. So we'll have here reverse is equal to true. Then if we output A and try it out, we'll get here 107 and two, and the list is now sorted in descending order. Lists in Python can store any type of data. So we could have a list which stores strings. We could have here string list is equal to, and we'll have Luke, Han, and Leia here. And if we output string list and save the program and try it out, we do get here Luke, Han, and Leia. If we use the sort method, it's going to sort them alphabetically. So we could have here string list dot sort. And then if we output the string list and try it out, we'll now get Han, Leia, and Luke. And now they've been sorted in alphabetic order. Now, one thing that's pretty interesting about Python lists is they can actually store different types of values in the same list. So for example, we could have here mixed list and mixed list could store two and the Boolean value true and the string X and even another list like one, two. Then if we print mixed list, it's going to be okay. We'll save this and try it out. And we get back our list, which stores values of different types. Now it's very important to understand how the assignment operator works with lists. So if we have a list, let's say X is equal to one, two, three. And then we have Y is equal to X. This does not create a copy of that list. So in memory, there's actually one list. There's one list with one, two, and three in it. And X and Y are both references to that list. So X references that list and so does Y. So Y is also going to reference the exact same list. So if we have here Y at the index one 
is equal to 100, that's going to change the same list. We'll have here 1, 100, and 3. Then if we output here x and x and y and y and save the program and try it out, we get that both x and y are the list 1, 100, and 3. And that is correct because both x and y reference the same list. So here, when we changed y at the index 1 to 100, that changed the same list that both x and y refer to. So when we output x and output y, we get that same list back. Now to make an actual copy of a list, we can use the copy method. So here, if we have q is equal to 1, 2, 3, we could have w is equal to q.copy. And this will actually create a copy of the list. So q is equal to 1, 2, 3 is going to give us the list 1, 2, 3, and q is going to be a reference to that list. So q.copy is going to create an actual copy of this list. So we'll have another list with 1, 2, 3, and w is going to be a reference to this list. So we'll have w referencing a second list with 1, 2, and 3. So then if we have w at the index 1 is equal to 100, it's only going to change this list here. If we output q and w, we'll see we have two different lists. So we'll have print and q and q and print with w and w. And if we save this and try it out, we'll get here q is 1, 2, 3, but w is 1, 103. So for the sake of preventing bugs, that's an important distinction to understand. The assignment operator is not going to create a new list. The copy method will. Now we can also use the slicing operator with lists. So for example, we could have here a list called letters. And in the letters list, we'll have A and B and C, D, E, and F. And each of these strings is at an index. So A is at the index zero and so on for the rest of the strings in this list. We can use the slicing operator to get back a new list made up of some portion of the items in this list. So we could have here letters slice is equal to letters with one colon four. So this here is an example of the slicing operator. This will give us back a new list made up of the items in letters from the index one up until, but not including the index four. So we'll get back here, B, C, and D in a new list. We'll output here, letter slice to confirm this. We'll save our program and try it out. And we do get back the list B, C, D. Now we can use a for loop to loop through the items in a list. So here we could have four letter in letters. And this loop body is going to run for each string in the letters list. And each time it does, letter is going to be set to the next item in the list. So here if we have print letter and save the program and try it out, we'll get here a, B, C, D, E, F, as we output the items in the list in order. We can use the clear method to remove all the items in the list and make it empty. So we could have here letters.clear. Then if we output here letters, we'll get back the empty list. So we'll save this and try it out. And we get back the empty list. The list still exists, it just doesn't have any items inside of it. We can use the plus operator to concatenate two lists. So we could have here list 1 is equal to 1, 2, 3, and list 2 is equal to 4, 5, 6. 
if we have new list is equal to list one plus list two, the plus operator is going to concatenate these lists. We could then have here print and new list. And if we save the program and try it out, we'll get back the new concatenated list one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll cover more about lists in Python in future videos, but this has been an introduction to lists in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.